Hello everyone, this is Jennifer from Tarl Speech with your lunch time live. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's great to see everyone here. Uh, good morning and good evening to everyone all across the world here. Let me just make sure I am live. Everything's looking good. So today I wanted to jump right in and our topic is going to be about a recent Wheel of Fortune episode that a lot of people have been asking me questions about. And we are going to watch this episode um, just in a minute here. Let me go ahead and share my screen. All right. And let's go ahead and watch this. Renting a paddle boat. No, that's not right. Oh. Uh, Michelle, you have $3,000. You can spin again, but you don't have to. Oh. $600. What money do you want? M. No. Crystal. I have to spin. $900. It's W? Okay, so that is the episode excuse me, that everyone has been talking about. Let me grab a drink of water here. And the confusion is about the words pedal and paddle. So I thought what we would do first is we would go through all of the vocabulary words to learn about those. And then we would talk about why this is a little bit confusing. All right. So First, we have the word pedal, P-E-D-A-L. And pedal is a foot-operated lever. We also say we pedal a bike, and we use that as a verb, meaning the action of using the pedals or the levers to operate the bike. So that is word number one, pedal. <clears throat> A petal can also be a flower, uh, the colorful part of the flower, and um, it is spelled differently, but this is a homophone, and the petal, again, is the colorful part of a flower. So we have petal, petal, and petal, P-E-D-D-L-E, which means to sell or promote. So I'm going to drop the video that I actually have for this in the chat. If you want to go ahead and watch that lesson um, and you can learn how to differentiate those words. Now let's move into quickly the word that um, is a little bit confusing here. And that word is paddle. So we have pedal with more of a closed mouth, pedal, pedal. And I'm going to go ahead and put that in the chat, pedal. And I promise I won't answer everyone's questions after. So we have pedal, and you can also think of it as pedal. That helps some people. And then we have the word paddle, which has that very open American ah sound. And we have paddle. That's a better way to spell it. Paddle. So pedal, you can see my mouth is more closed. 
and my tongue is between my top and my bottom teeth. It's just peeking out. Pedal for paddle. My mouth is more open, and that means the tip of my tongue can get lower in my mouth, and then that will change that vowel. So paddle. So what's confusing about this lesson? I have to say, I was actually kind of confused with the Wheel of Fortune because I actually say paddle boat, not pedal boat. And this is, I think, where some of the confusion comes in. So a paddle boat, you have this picture here at the top. Those are typically seen on the Mississippi River. And this is a quote coming from Pat Sajak, who is the host of Wheel of Fortune. And the paddle boat has a very large paddle in the back, um, the paddle that we use to move the boat. And that moves the boat along. And so we spell that with P-A-D-D-L-E. A pedal boat you pedal with your feet. Here's the caveat. This is where I was confused. I actually had to Google this. I call a pedal boat, this boat here at the bottom, a paddle boat. I don't know why. That's just what I call it. And I did ask some friends and they all call those paddle boats too. I'm not quite sure why. The only reason I can think of is that this part that paddles and move the boats is in the little tiny hump there in the middle of the boat. And so that is maybe why we call it a paddle boat. And I think where some people were getting upset on Twitter with this is that if you look at the video, you can see there's an E there. So we would not say paddle there, we would say pedal. So again, not paddle, but pedal. So did any of you happen to see this episode? Anybody? Um, I'm not quite sure how a lot of people saw this if you aren't living in the U.S., but a lot of people did, um, and that led to some confusion and did kind of just upset some people, which I think is so interesting. I think it's always so fascinating um, how certain pronunciations and certain spellings and certain words just really kind of upset some people. Um, so, all right, I just wanted to go through that quickly. So we had a really good, quick topic. I'm going to go back to the chat now, and we're going to go ahead and open up for questions. Okay. So I got some hellos and also someone is asking, how is the idiom hunky dory pronounced? What does that mean? Hunky dory means great. So everything is hunky dory. Everything is amazing. So that's hunky dory and everything is hunky dory here. Um, having a great day so far. Okay. Hello with the cute little kitty face. You were here early. I love it. You are all set and ready to go. Um, let's see. And hello. Good to see you. That's someone with a YouTube um, avatar. And there's the cute little kitty face. Um, and let's see. And hello. Great to see you. Hi, Martin. Great to see you as well. Good morning. Um, okay. And you have watched Wheel of Fortune. That's amazing. I actually love the show. I used to watch it with my grandmother. It's been on so long um, and is just uh, amazing. Okay. Next question. How is the city Des Moines, Iowa pronounced? Okay. So I would say Da Moines, Iowa. Des Moines, Iowa. That's a great question. Um, oftentimes in the U.S., when names were taken from a different country, the pronunciation will morph into something that's a little more American. 
I grew up in an area that had a city. I'm going to write this in the chat. Okay. And this is the name of the city. And we pronounce it Buena Vista. Buena Vista. So again, pronunciation changes oftentimes um, based on the um, area. But again, to say Des Moines, um, I would say Da Des Moines. Des Moines. And that's how you say that. All right, we got another question here from Martin. Hi, Martin. Um, what is the cor correct pronunciation of August, authority, and author? Okay, so for the word August, that A-U, we are just going to pronounce it as an ah. So we're going to pronounce that as an ah. So we have August, August, and then we have for the word author, same thing. We're going to pronounce that as author. So author and August. Okay, great. So now we want to look at one more word here, authority. And we pronounce authority. It's going to be a little bit different. For authority, we're going to use that schwa, that a uh, sound, because that is the unstressed syllable. So we make that vowel shorter, softer, and lower in pitch. So you have authority, authority. You are very welcome, happy to help. And hello to you in India. All right. Um, and hello. All right. Any more questions? If we don't have any more questions, I'm going to go ahead and just review some of my more recent videos that I've posted. Any questions? Okay. So this week was Halloween in the U.S. And so I posted several videos for Halloween. I, per I did um, post a video on the word spirit, which you might use if you were watching some Halloween horror movies. The spirits might be coming into the house, the evil spirits. Um, I also posted two videos on horror and terror. And I did want to kind of talk about that. I got a few really great questions on this. So I'm going to put these words in the chat so you know what I am speaking about. All right. So terror and horror have those R movement vowels in the middle. So I kind of struggle with teaching this. I'll be very honest. And the reason is, is because different learners who have different native language backgrounds sort of learn these words a little differently. So I would probably teach these two different ways moving forward if I have time within the lessons. All right. So for the word terror, technically there's a T, and I'll put this in the chat too. This I think will make it a little bit easier. So for the word terror, let's start there. All right. I would pronounce that as terror, terror, okay? That being said, I link or connect my R to the ER. So I connect that air and the er together. And so to some people, it sounds like there are two R's there. So you can also think about this word as 
terror. So again, it's sort of however your language learning brain thinks about this. Some people think about it as terror, and other people think about it as terror. Whichever works for you, go ahead and do it. Um, I always say to my one-on-one -on -one students that I see individually, it's all about how you think about it in your brain, not necessarily how I describe it every time. And so my teaching kind of shifts sometimes with my students who are one-to-one -one, because they understand a little bit more how they learn. Also posted two videos that did get a lot of comments as well. And people have been loving these. We have the words pumpkin and also the word Halloween. And you have many variations for these words. So for the word pumpkin, that cute orange gourd that we decorate with or that you carve to make a jack-o'-lantern or that you have in a pumpkin spice latte, we are going to, I pronounce it as pumpkin. So just the way it is spelled, pumpkin. That's how I say it. Some people drop the P in the middle and say pumpkin. Some people actually just say an N, pumpkin. So there are many variations. Same with Halloween. I say Halloween. Some people say Halloween or Halloween. Many, many variations, even just within the US. And so my big takeaway for all of you is just go for being clear. If people understand you, that is the most important. You don't need to be perfect, but clear and effective is key. Okay. All right. So, um, all right. So yeah, sometimes, um, we do say the short O, ah, for that A, U but also sometimes we say that short uh for that A-U. And thank you for watching my videos for Halloween. I appreciate it. Okay. Can I pronounce the word will for you? Yes. So will um, is a word that is very commonly used in the U.S. And I actually have a video here that I'm going to share for you. Um, and so you can get a little more detail in just a second, as soon as I get this link for you. So to say, well, my tip for you is to start with the W and pucker your lips. Ooh, well, I'm then moving from that pucker from that woo to the and for that short I sound, my tongue is just behind my top teeth. With, you can see it up there, but it's flat and high in my mouth. And then I touch my teeth or the alveolar ridge, that spot where your teeth meet the skin for that L sound. Will. Okay. That is how I suggest, if you're struggling with this word, that you pronounce it. What is really confusing to a listener if they don't understand you is when that sound, that L sound disappears completely. Or um, if my students try to get too fancy sometimes with the light and the dark L, I say just make that L at the end of the word longer and stronger. And that's really going to help you um, be clear. Now, if I'm talking about a person, will, I really want to make sure I say that word um, well and very articulated. However, when I'm using the word will in a sentence, it oftentimes reduces and gets shorter and softer and lower in pitch. And actually for December, for the lunch hour live, I'm going to talk about unstressing syllables. So many of my students really struggle with that. And so I'm going to talk about that. That will help you to be clearer just in single words, but then also when you are um, yeah, speaking in sentences, it really helps with your intonation as well. All right. So I hope that that helped you out. All right. 
Um, all right. I actually think I have a video for this too. So William is curious with the words feel, fuel, and fill. All right. I just think that I made a video for fuel, but I don't think that it, it posted just yet. Okay. This is an oldie, <laughs> but it is a video that I have for this. So let me go ahead. I have a video for feel, which is the long E. And I'll put this in the chat so you can all see what I'm talking about. And the word fill, which is the short I. Um, the L really makes these vowels difficult for a lot of my students. And so if you just think about these vowels separately for a second, I think that might help. So the long E in feel is the smiling vowel with your tongue really high and tense and flat in your mouth. E. When I relax my lips a little bit, so very tense for that E, E. I relax my mouth, my cheeks, my lips, and my tongue a little bit. My tongue is still high and flat in my mouth, but it's more relaxed and it pops down just a little tiny bit. And then it's just behind my top teeth. E, I, E, I. And if you watch my fingers, that's sort of how my tongue is moving. E, I, E, I. Okay, so those would be the vowels in team. You are on my team versus Tim, the boy's name. So those are the vowels in those words. So for feel, think about long and tense. And then for fill, think about a little more relaxed, which will feel a little bit quicker and faster as well. Fuel, like I said, I just made a video. Um, I think it's a short and I will tell you when that will post. I've been on a video making tear here. I've just made so many videos. That is actually scheduled to post January 7th for fuel. Okay, so the difference between the words few and fuel, and I'll put this in the chat for you, the difference between few and fuel is I end with that L by touching the back of my top front teeth or that spot where your teeth meet the skin on the roof of your mouth. If you struggle with people understanding, are you saying few? Are you saying fuel? Be sure to hold that L a little bit longer. Make that sound longer and stronger and that's really going to help you. So again, the words are few few, few, and then I'm going to add the L, fuel, 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 few, fuel. All right. Um, and let's go back to the chat here. <laughs> okay. Very funny. You think you're bald because of these words. I think I'm getting gray hair sometimes from trying to figure out how to teach as well. So I totally get that. Okay. Man and men. I do have a video for this and I will post this as well, just in case that helps you a little bit. The difference here is man has that very wide open awe. Oops, let me turn off this commercial. So I'm trying to get you this link and multitask and it's not working very well. All right. So for man, think about really wide open ah sound. You can even see in the camera on the video if you're watching me on YouTube, my mouth is really wide open and the tip of my tongue is low in my mouth and the back of my tongue is kind of pulled up. Ah, 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 man, man, man. For men, you can see my mouth is more closed. My jaw is more closed. That helps me keep my tongue a little bit higher. My tongue is just going to be peeking out right there between my top and my bottom teeth. Eh, eh, 
a in men, a in man. So men, the plural, men, 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 man, man, man. Now I'm going to say them naturally. Um, and I'll do, let's see, let me put this in here first so you can see exactly what I'm saying with the spelling. So I have men, 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 man, 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 men, man, men, man. So you can see when I'm saying them a little more naturally, I'm not opening my mouth as widely, but open it really wide when you're practicing and that's going to help you a lot. All right. Um, Oh, that sounds delicious. Um, we carved pumpkins in my house. So someone said, we like to make salty and spicy pumpkin recipe. It sounds delicious. We made pumpkin seeds here in my house and it was delicious. Okay, here's a new question. You're welcome. Thanking me for my efforts. I appreciate that. How do we pronounce June, nude, and flute? Okay. Yeah, we, so there are also listed for those of you who are listening to the podcast, some diacritics, which are those um, symbols that tell us vowels are longer and shorter and all of that. These are helpful oftentimes, but people hear things differently. So it makes it a little more confusing. I say, think about these words with that um, ooh sound. So think about the ooh June. Think about that ooh vowel in June. And then in n ood and fl oot. Okay. All the same vowel. Here's where I think people really struggle is that sometimes the sound before and the sound after influences that vowel in the middle. So the vowel with that N in June may sound different to you than the vowel in nude. June, nude. It's the same vowel. It just sounds slightly different because of the sounds that are before and after it. So I'm going to say these words again. June, nude, flute. June, nude, flute. So I just like to think about it as that ooh sound. And William, you are welcome. English version, Hindi lyrics, you are welcome. Just going through all of my um, questions here. Martin is asking, how do you pronounce worship? Think about it as were, like the name word were. Were and then ship, worship. Okay. Worship, worship, worship. Some people might say worship with that short uh. When we have that unstressed, relaxed vowel, like the short e in men, the short i in sip, and the short u in pup. All of those vowels sound a little bit similar when almost exactly the same to be um, exact in unstressed syllables, depending on how you say the word. So don't overthink it too much. But if you hear a short I, E, or U, whichever one you hear, you're probably going to be fine if you just go ahead and say that. It's about that rhythm and that unstressed syllable, which again, we'll get into a little bit more next month. Okay, Jose, you are welcome. Bank and bank. Actually, uh, my daughter, Claire, sometimes helps me make videos for the holidays. And we were talking, I can't believe I don't have a video for the word thank. And bank rhymes with thank. So a rhyming word means that the end of the word is exactly the same. The only difference is that first sound. So let's do the ank part of that. I like to think of this as a few different sounds. Sometimes this helps people. Ank. So think about that NG sound. And an NG sound is sort of that, it's that nasal sound 
that we make with the tongue tip really low in the mouth, like you would say the G sound, g, 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 or the K sound, k, k, k. All we're gonna do is we're gonna shift the air to come out of the nose. Ang, ang, ang. And then we're gonna add the K. So open wide for that ah, and keep your tongue low for that NG, just shift the air out of your nose. And then keep the mouth in the same spot and the air will puff out for the K. Ank, ank, ank. So my air is coming from here, from the voicing. Ank, ank, ank. And let's add the other two sounds. Thank and bank. Thank and bank bank. Speaking of that voice, this is just a good general tip. Um, in English, you tend to speak from here, not always from up here or in here or in the back of your head. And I am going to do a lunchtime live about that in the near future. All right. We are just about ready to wrap up. I'm trying to keep these a little bit shorter per request because I know some of you have other things to do. Um, and also, I do post this entire lunchtime live as a podcast. Um, it does take a little bit of time for the um, podcast to um, post. So stay tuned for that. That should be posting by Friday at the latest. Maybe even today if everything kind of um, finishes up quicker. All right, we, I see, I did miss a question here. Okay, peak and peak are pronounced exactly the same. So P-E-E-K and P-E-A-K are both pronounced with the long E, peak, peak, peak. Now, when you have the word pick, P-I-C-K, it's the same thing that we just talked about with feel and fill, that long E, versus that short I. I could do a whole class on this. So many of my students struggle with that. So that long E in peak and the short I in pick. So peak, pick, peak, pick. When in doubt for this long E, just make it longer. Really go for it. Really make that sound a little bit longer and then try to make the short I a little bit shorter and quicker. Think about it that way. So peak, pick, peak, pick. All right, um, and again, I'm just going back here to make sure that I didn't miss anything. Um, okay, I, I hope I did help you, H11RK. I can't remember what your original question was. Let me go back up and see. Yeah, um, and your point was about all those little symbols for the sounds, I say just kind of, you know, go for being um, clear and you don't have to be perfect. I do love Google if you're looking to find out how to pronounce a word quickly. Um, if you go for a definition of a word and you type it in, it will bring up um, the pronunciation for you and you can click on it um, and hear it again. Um, and let's see, I think that is it. I'll give you all one more minute to see if you have any more questions. While I'm waiting for last questions, um, I will be, I finally finished up all of my vowel workbooks. So you can buy each sound right now for all of the consonants in English. I have those on Teachers Pay Teachers, Google, Kobo, um, let's see, Teespring and iTunes. And all of those are one page um, of directions, a page of words with the sound in the beginning, middle, and the end, and then a page of sentences. And there's accompanying audio for all of those in the ebook. So it's really great. You can practice on your phone, on your computer, wherever you are. And they made those for each sound for a few reasons. One, to keep everything a little bit less expensive for those of you who are students. Um, and two, some people just only need one thing and they don't want to pay for the whole book. I'm also combining them into a book, a compilation of all of the sounds. But just please keep in mind, 
every um, platform where I'm selling the books has different um, standards and different um, size requirements. So some of the books I can't post on certain sites. So if you can't find what you're looking for, go to another site and you'll probably be able to find it. Also, I have a lot of freebies. Um, there are some on my website. If you look, I have a few pages posted for free. And there are also some free pages on Teachers Pay Teachers. And you don't have to be a teacher to get those. And I'm also, again, like I said, in the process of posting all of the vowel books. And I hope to have those posted all by the end of next week. Oh, and all of your nice thanks are coming in. You are welcome for those explanations. Love the hearts. Thank you so much. Um, yes. So the long, so thank technically has the short A sound. That's how I would teach it because I use the way that children learn to read in the U.S. instead of phonetics because that gets really confusing for people. Um, and so I think of the word thank with a short A, but again, that N influences it. So we're not saying thing, A, thing, um, with that long A, it's that short A that's a little more open, but it's a little bit longer. Heck, if that long A, would you say in day works for you, go with that. That's totally fine. Let's not be too complex. So if you want, you can say the long A in thank you, and that should be fine. Um, what does it mean to be a co-founder? That means that two people founded or started something um, together. Um, okay, and someone um, on here with their American co-worker went back and forth about those words. I'm telling you, Americans love to have a good discussion about everything. And words is one of those things that people just really have strong opinions about. If you want to see some really funny comments, search for my video on bag um, and beg. People have strong opinions <laughs> on those words. Um, and yeah, some things are very, very tricky. So thank you so much, everyone. You were all amazing. Stay tuned. I hope I can keep up this pace, but I am now posting one free lesson every day on YouTube. Tuesdays are two for Tuesday with a homophobe lesson. Fridays um, for the near future, um, well into next year, are going to be heteronyms, which are two words that um, are spelled the same but pronounced differently. This is great to expand your vocabulary and to expand um, your reading comprehension as well. And then I'm posting shorts all the other days. So you get a short on Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday. I'm really trying to keep up with all the requests. I love them. Keep them coming. I also have um, classes on Udemy and also one-to-one um, -one classes. You can see that information on my website. You can check out all my socials if you um, need anything. Um, you know, I'm happy to respond to questions that you have there. And if you are looking for um, a class for your students, either virtually or in person, please reach out. I would just absolutely love to help, um, you know, teacher um, students live um, online or in person. And if you have any requests, especially you teachers for your students, I'll give you all a little shout out. Um, I just posted my link tree in the chat and you can get all of this information for those of you who are listening to the podcast at tarlspeech.com. So thanks everyone. Be well, have an amazing day and an amazing November. And I will see you all the first week in December um, for our lunchtime live. Thanks so much, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.